So I was talking to a member of my family this week and how are things in the church? And he said, oh, we had a couple. They came to us from Australia and, you know, they were unhappy with the church. When they came to us, they seemed to be very happy and they were with us and in all the meetings. And then suddenly they stopped. They disappeared. And um, when I finally saw him, he'd been reading the web. He'd been reading the anti-Christian, atheistic websites, many of them, and articles, many of them, deploring the Christian faith. And they got him. And you know the consequences. You can guess the consequence. A man who leaves the faith, it's not long before he leaves his wife. Before there's moral collapse and divorce. The faith holds us. It grips us. What value there is. We are living lives informed by them, leaning upon them. And so the apostle at the end, he is saying to us, you know, I've not lost my faith in this personal risen Savior. I've not lost my commitment to him. Lord, it is my chief complaint that my love for him is weak and faint, yet I do love him. And I'm looking forward to loving him more and more. That faith begins in the the intellect. But then, oh, my friends, that faith goes through every nook and cranny of our lives. It teaches, uh, reaches our affections. It's in the mind, then it's in the emotions. And it determines our choices, our fidelities, how important are our marriage vows. Our options, and the whole tone of our lives. Whenever Paul rejoiced, it was his faith that made him rejoice. Whenever he wept, it was his faith that made him weep. And when he made decisions, he made them because he was a believer and disciple of Jesus Christ. And he set before him certain options, certain priorities, certain preferences that would always be in first place in his life. They determined what he was to believe. For him to live was Jesus Christ. And you go further, he had rest, didn't he? He had peace. He came to Christ, and he was given rest. There is therefore now no condemnation. To them that are in Christ Jesus. He knew it. He knew the just could live and go on living day by day by faith. In his heart there was peace with God. And his doctrine made him work. It never allowed him to stop working in the work of faith. I've kept the faith. I have the peace of my faith. I have the work of my faith. In other words, in other in. In other words, his theology wasn't something that he analyzed, that he liked debating about with other men. It wasn't something simply that he meditated upon and sang in hymns, but it was something to proclaim. It was something to share. It was something he owed to everyone he met. And if the conversation by the providence of God and his own wisdom, began to move in a certain way. He went with it, that he could say to that person, yeah, I, yeah I, I've had uh, such a, a good time in my life since I became a Christian. Oh, oh, what was that then? And so he kept on, his faith kept him working. So I've kept the doctrine and I've kept my commitment and my trust and I've kept my pledge. I've kept faith with God. I've been faithful 
to my God. In other words, when he saw and was struck blind on the Damascus Road and heard Jesus speak to him, there was a commitment. In that intellectual revolution that took place then, it resulted in a pledge that he made. What wilt thou have me do, O Lord? I, the disciple, you, the master. This excerpt was taken from Jeff Thomas's full sermon, Keep the Faith and Finish the Race, that was preached at the 2022 Fellowship Conference, UK.